Welcome to a lesson on solving one-step equations. To solve an equation means to undo all the operations of the equation, leaving the variable by itself on one side. This is known as isolating the variable. In this lesson, we're studying one-step equations. They're called one-step equations because we can isolate the variable on one side of the equation by performing one operation to both sides of the equation. So to solve our equations, we'll be using the properties of equality given here above. So let's go ahead and review them. Let's first review the addition and subtraction property of equality, which tells us if we have the equation A equals B, if we add the same value to both sides of the equation, we maintain equality. It's also true if we subtract the same value on both sides of the equation, we also maintain equality. And then for the multiplication and division property of equality, again, if we start with the equation A equals B, then if we multiply both sides of the equation by the same value, we also maintain equality. And we also maintain equality if we divide both sides of the equation by the same value. So for one-step equations, we'll be able to isolate the variable by either adding or subtracting the same value to both sides of the equation, or multiplying or dividing both sides of the equation by the same value. So looking at our first example, we have x plus seven equals 18. So to solve this equation, our goal is to isolate x, in this case, on the left side of the equation. Right now we have plus seven on the same side as x, so our goal here is to undo this plus seven by performing the opposite operation. Well, the opposite of plus seven is minus seven, so to isolate x and solve the equation, we subtract seven on both sides of the equation. So we subtract seven on the left, as well as on the right, and now we simplify. Notice on the left side, seven minus seven is equal to zero. This is why we subtract a seven on both sides of the equation. So we're left with just x on the left side. On the right side, we have 18 minus seven, which equals 11. Notice how we've isolated the variable, and therefore we have our solution. Our solution is x equals 11. It's always a good idea to check the answer or check the solution. So to check our solution, we would substitute 11 for x in the original equation and make sure it satisfies the equation. So if we substitute 11 for x, we'd have 11 plus seven equals 18. Well, 11 plus seven is 18. 18 equals 18 is true, which means our solution is correct and it checks. In example two, we have r minus four equals negative five. Again, our goal here is to isolate r on the left side of the equation, so we don't want this minus four here. So to undo the minus four and isolate r, we perform the opposite operation, so we add four to both sides of the equation. And now if we simplify, notice how negative four plus four is zero. That's why we added four to both sides of the equation. So now on the left side, we just have r equals on the right side, we have negative five plus four, which equals negative one. We've isolated the variable, and therefore we have our solution. Our solution is r equals negative one. And now to check our solution, we'll substitute negative one for r in the original equation. So we would have negative one minus four equals negative five. Well, negative one minus four is negative five. Negative five equals negative five is true, and therefore our solution checks. Let's look at some more examples. In example three, we have negative four plus b equals 45. We need to be careful here. We do have addition here, but because we're trying to isolate b on the left side of the equation, we don't want this negative four here. So to undo negative four and isolate b, we want to add four to both sides of the equation. Notice negative four plus four would be zero. So simplifying, again, negative four plus four is equal to zero, so this simplifies out. So we're left with just a positive b or b. On the right side, we have 45 plus four, which equals 49. We've isolated our variable, and therefore we have our solution, b equals 49. We'll go ahead and check this by substituting 49 for b. So we'd have negative four plus 49 equals 45. 
Well, negative 4 plus 49 is 45. 45 equals 45 is true, and therefore our solution is correct. Notice in example 4, the variable m is on the right side. It doesn't matter which side we isolate the variable on. In this example, we'll isolate m on the right side. So notice how we don't want this 19 here. This is a positive 19. So to undo 19 and isolate m, we will subtract 19 on both sides of the equation. Notice 19 minus 19 is equal to zero. So on the left side we have three minus 19, that would be negative 16, equals, on the right side, 19 minus 19 is zero. That's why we subtracted 19 on both sides. So we're just left with m on the right side. So we have our solution, negative 16 equals m, or we can change order here and say m equals negative 16, which would be more common. But this would also be acceptable. Let's go ahead and check our solution. So we'll substitute negative 16 for m. So we'd have three equals 19 plus negative 16. So we have three equals 19 plus negative 16 is three, and therefore our solution checks. In example five, we have negative three y equals negative 42. Negative three y means negative three times y. So to isolate y on the left side of the equation, we want to undo this multiplication. The opposite operation of multiplication is division. So in this equation, to isolate y, we would divide both sides by negative three. Notice here on the left side, negative three divided by negative three simplifies to one. One times y is equal to y. On the right side, we have negative 42 divided by negative three, which is equal to positive 14. We've isolated y, and therefore this is the solution to our equation. For our check, we'd substitute 14 for y, so we'd have negative three times 14 equals negative 42. Negative three times 14 is negative 42, so our solution checks. Example six, we have x over six equals negative five. Let's rewrite this so we have some more room. Remember, a fraction bar means division, so we can also read this x divided by six equals negative five. The opposite operation of division is multiplication, so to undo dividing by six, we'll multiply both sides by six. And because x over six is in fraction form, on the left side, let's go ahead and multiply by six over one. On the right side, because we don't have a fraction, we can just go ahead and multiply by six. Notice on the left we can simplify before multiplying. There's one six and six here, and one six and six here. So we just have one times x, which equals x. On the right side we have six times negative five, which is equal to negative 30. We've isolated x, and therefore we have our solution. Our solution is x equals negative 30. For our check, we'll substitute negative 30 for x, so we'd have negative 30 divided by six equals negative five. Well, negative 30 divided by six is negative five. Negative five equals negative five is true, and therefore our solution checks. In example seven, we have three-fourths a equals eight. This means three-fourths times a equals eight. Let's go ahead and rewrite this so we have some more room. So three-fourths a equals eight. Now, because three-fourths a means three-fourths times a, we're probably thinking we should divide by three-fourths. Remember, instead of dividing by a fraction, we normally multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of three-fourths would be four-thirds. So to isolate our variable, here we'll multiply by the reciprocal of three-fourths, or four-thirds. Because our product here involves a fraction, let's write eight as eight over one. Notice here we have the product of reciprocals, which would be one, or we can also simplify. There's one, four, and four, and one, four, and four, one, three, and three, and one, three, and three. So we just have one times a, which is equal to a. On the right side, nothing simplifies, so we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So four times eight is equal to 32, and three times one is equal to three. We've isolated the variable, and therefore our solution is a equals 32 thirds. Checking our solution, we'll substitute 32 thirds for a, 
So we'd have three-fourths times thirty-two-thirds equals eight. We can simplify before multiplying. There's one, three, and three here. Four and thirty-two share a common factor of four. There's one, four, and four, and eight, fours, and thirty-two. Notice how our product here is just going to be eight over one, or eight. Eight equals eight, and therefore our solution checks. And for our last example, we have seventeen equals negative x, which we can also write as seventeen equals negative one x, which means negative one times x. So to undo this multiplication and isolate x on the right side, we would divide both sides by negative one. On the left side, we have seventeen divided by negative one, which is equal to negative seventeen. On the right side, Negative one divided by negative one simplifies to one. One times x is just x. So we have isolated x and we have our solution. Negative seventeen equals x or x equals negative seventeen. To check our solution, we would have seventeen equals negative or the opposite of x where x is negative seventeen. So here we have seventeen equals the opposite of negative seventeen is seventeen, or if we wanted to, we could think of this as negative one times negative seventeen, which equals seventeen. Either way, our solution checks, which was negative seventeen equals x, or x equals negative seventeen. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.